Hi, this is Paul Conrad here in Tucson, Arizona. Going to show you some water harvesting techniques that I use, give you a couple tips. Uh, today is April 2nd, 2017. I like to date my videos. Uh, just starting the first couple videos of this channel. So, uh, hope you uh, like and subscribe to the videos so that uh, we build some following here and get this more public. So, like I said, I'm here in Arizona. Um, I'm going to show you one of the main tanks. This is an IBC tank. It's approximately four foot by four foot by four foot and it holds 275 gallons. You can get a version that holds 330 gallons. This one holds 275. So I'm going to basically show you up here. Uh, this is a gutter system that comes from up here on top of this 10 by 10 shed. It empties down and comes into this water tank. I have painted the tank white. If you do use an IBC tank and it's going to be in direct sunlight, it should be painted because the UV rays will break it down. Think of a milk jug in the middle of the desert. If you've ever been out walking through the desert and come across a milk jug, if you touch it, it crumbles. This is the same type of material that a milk jug is made out of, just uh, much thicker. It's probably about a quarter inch thick wall on it. So let's talk about the, uh, the actual fittings here. Um, this is a, uh, the standard valve that, that almost every IBC will come with. It does have a special set of threads. So what I do is I take the water that's here, and I'm going to show you another tank that I have that I've set up higher, and I usually pump the water out of here up into a higher point so I get more pressure and it's easier to use. And I'm going to show you that. Okay, so that was the the main input that's pulling off with two sheds so I'm going to take you over this way if you follow along and track this is you're going to see a little bit of the garden and I'm going to show you the tank that I use the most while I'm watering so if you see the tank um, it has some very non-common threads and I'm going to take that can you get a good view of those threads there okay so those threads are not common so this is an adapter and you can find these um, on on Amazon or on eBay if, if you can't find them locally. I found them locally for a couple bucks. But basically what that does is it adapts those very thick threads to a common 2 inch NPT or national pipe thread which then you can use. So if you take a look at the outlet of the tank, the very bottom of the standard valve, it has threads that are not very common. So we take that, we screw that in there. That converts it to, like I said, the, uh, the two inch NPT, National Pipe Thread. And we take this adapter here. And that's gonna take it from what's called female NPT or FNPT to a glue-on connector, two inch glue-on. Just gonna screw that in. What I do is, and I made this little this little uh, unit here, and this allows me to leave this setup here. This allows me to leave this setup on the tanks at all times, so I don't have to move this entire setup. And because this is not high pressure, all I have to do is take that and plug that right in wherever I want to start taking water out. And then I just simply open this valve, which I'm not going to do at the second. But I'm going to show you this setup very briefly. So there's a two inch glue on, and that changes in there, and it reduces it down to three quarter inch. So I have a three quarter inch male, a little, a little uh, piece of pipe, three quarter inch male, then that goes into a three quarter inch ball valve. That adapts three quarter inch out and that's a hose hose thread three quarter inch hose not three quarter inch standard thread so one thing you want to keep in mind when you are you are putting any type of valve in line with your output is you always want to use a ball valve don't settle for a hose bib a hose bib will have a lot of restrictions i'm going to give you an angle and allow you to look right through this pipe here and you can see it's a straight shot through. You're seeing directly through the pipe. A hose bib will actually neck the hole down so that it is so small that you're probably only feeding water through a 3 8 inch hole. 
which isn't a big problem if you have 60 pounds of pressure coming off the street. But here you're probably only looking at maybe five to 10 pounds of, of actual pressure, and that's just gravity and the weight of the water. So let's go ahead and put this in, in, uh, in action here. So I take that, I plug that in. Now um, I, I can control that off of either valve. Now that I have two valves in line, I've opened the main valve. I'm gonna plug in my hose here. And uh, I will mention this, even with just the water pressure from the tank, it's still, it's still a little high to spray directly on the plant. So what I did is I took, uh, I took this, which, which, which uh, pipes it down. I put a couple holes in there so that it flows freely, but it's not just a direct three quarter inch stream. So I just plug that in. And then, and then I open my valve here. So here's the stream of water that I get. It's actually gonna take a little while because I, I haven't, uh, haven't had water in there for a little bit, so it's pushing the air out. And just a second, we should get flow. So there's our flow. And that's the standard flow you can get used to. The nice thing is you don't have to worry about so much high pressure that you're just knocking your plants all to the ground. Um, and then you can use it at that point. Now you could feed this through a uh, irrigation system and put it, put lines in and make this a whole lot less labor intensive. But I don't mind coming out here a couple times a week. Um, I have uh, been high. I have added a, about a two inch layer of, of wood chips out here. And it really has extended the amount of time that I've had to water. So before I had the wood chips on, I'd have to come out and water every day or every other day. And now I'm only watering about every third day. And I come out and I check the, I come and check the soil, you know, stick my finger in there under the wood chips and see the moisture level of the soil. And if it needs water, then I'll come out and water. And um, this area right here, it doesn't take me more than uh, 10 or 15 minutes a day to water all of, all of this area. So, so there's, you can see the flow. Um, this is a rain barrel that, I, that I'm using. I just recently put it up uh, a little higher. It was, uh, it was only two blocks high. I added a fourth block. When I got higher, I also filled that in with concrete to stabilize that so that it was a lot safer. So that I didn't get movement. I didn't have to worry about those blocks moving away from each other. So, so this is my setup. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the pressure that I have now, and it, it allows me to water plants with rainwater. Um, another thing I can do, even if I don't have rainwater, is fill these up. I can fill these up with regular tap water and, and uh, allow the chlorine gases to seep off, and that's still much better for the plants than the, than the uh, regular tap water that has all the chlorine in it. Um, hope you liked the video. Like I said, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comments section. And uh, thanks for watching. See you later.